Beaters, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and welcome to my Crystal Cube Tennis Necklace Tutorial. This is a spin-off of the Crystal Cube bracelet design and tutorial that I put out about a year ago. So if you haven't seen that tutorial and you'd like to check it out, I will try to link that up in the corner. This necklace has a lot of the same steps as the bracelet, but it will take a little bit longer and there is an additional step added in. You can find many of the materials you need, including the crystal cubes and the beading tools and some of your findings at bbcraft.com. I will leave the links to everything that I'm using today down below, as well as the more specific quantities. I will leave a coupon code for bbcraft down below as well, in case you'd like to try them out and save a little bit off of your purchase. The necklace we're gonna be making today is gonna to have a beaded length of approximately 16 inches. So if you need it a little bit longer or shorter, you can adjust the quantities of beads that you'll need accordingly. Today we'll be using four millimeter crystal cube beads, size 80 seed beads. The only reason I'm using two different colors here is because I didn't have 15 grams in total of one color. And on the base, while this is worn, you won't really see it. So I'm gonna actually alternate these two colors, which is a great tip if you wanna use what you have and you don't have quite the amount that you need right away. You'll also need two different colors of size 11O seed beads and two different colors of size 15O seed beads. For your findings, you'll need a clasp of your choice, two wire guards or something I highly suggest, as well as two split or jump rings. Today, my thread of choice will be the 0 0.006 inch diameter or six pound fire line. And I will be using a size 10 beading needle as well as a pair of scissors and some jewelry pliers to help us out with those jump rings. One thing I wanna mention is this is a very, very thread thirsty design. So you will end up needing probably at least 10 yards of your beading thread. You may need 35 feet of beading thread. I would say start out with as much as you're comfortable with. I'm actually gonna start with approximately 20 feet and I'm just gonna bead with the right half of my thread, so with about 10 feet. And I'll show you what I'm doing in just a moment. But go ahead and thread your needle with what you're comfortable with. And then we're gonna get started with our base, which is gonna use the size 80 seed beads. So if you have enough, go ahead and use one color, or if you wanna alternate it, you can. You will not see the base of this ladder stitch at all once this is worn. So keep that in mind if you're just trying to use up what you have. So I'll be alternating the blue and the white, and we're gonna make a three bead wide ladder stitch. And this is gonna become about 18 inches long you're gonna make your ladder stitch portion about one to two inches longer than you want your finished beading to be. That will allow for the ladder stitch to shrink up a little bit as you get further on into your work. So to start out, I'm gonna pick up three of these blue ones and then three of the white ones. And I'm gonna slide these down to about the halfway point of my thread. That way I'll have about 10 feet that I'm working with at this time, and that will leave a 10 or so foot tail for me to pick back up with later. And it will just reduce the amount of thread that I'll have to add on, but you can do what you're comfortable with. So I'm gonna pull this down to about there. And I'm gonna take my needle and swing back around through those first eight O's that I added, the three blue ones. And I'm going to pull, and that gets our ladder stitch started. So then I'm going to take my needle, which is coming out of this end, and I'm going to go up through the three white seed beads. And pull and pull and pull. It's going to be a lot of thread pulling here, but it'll be worth it. All right, so now I'm ready to pick up three more blue seed beads and swinging around to the other side of where my thread is currently coming out and going back up through those three white seed beads. And pull and hold all of this with your thumb and your forefinger and, and make sure you keep pulling it all together as best you can so these beads sit next to each other. Now we're coming out of the top of these three white seed beads. I'm gonna go down through the three blue seed beads. And if you've done ladder stitch before, this will be very easy for you and you'll probably be ready to go ahead and move on. Let me do a couple more with you. Three white seed beads this time. Again, swinging around and going down through the row right there. 
pulling and now we just want to settle these into place. So we're gonna go back up through the three we just added and pulling that all together. Let's do one more. I'm gonna pick up three blue, swinging up through this last row of three, pulling, and then going down through the three that we just added. This is a great mindless portion of the necklace if you want to do this while you're watching one of your favorite shows or something like that because you're going to be doing this for like i said one to two inches longer than you want the beaded portion to be so i'm going to be making an 18 inch row of ladder stitch i won't torture you by doing that all on this tutorial i'm going to stop here and that way you can pause the video keep going and i'll meet you back when we've completed our ladder stitch portion and we will move on to the next step. All right, guys, welcome back. So I have my 18 inch long ladder stitch right here. It took 145 rows of three beads to get up to the 18 inches. And of course, if you wanted to make your beaded portion longer, you'll just keep adding on and adjust the next steps accordingly. This is all I have left on this side of my work. I'm actually gonna take my needle off of this side We'll leave this tail on just in case we want to use this to add on our wire guard to this side or finish up any of our work later on. You never know, you might need this. So pop your needle on the other side where you have your longer length of thread and we will pick up starting with the other side of our necklace. Okay, so now we're ready for the fun part. We're gonna see this necklace finally start to take shape. This is where we're gonna be using both our 11-0 seed beads and our 15-0 seed beads. So grab those in both colors and also we'll be using our cubes. Now you need to decide, and you may have already, which color you want to have where. So this is my example piece I'm bringing back. I'm gonna be doing the silver in place of where the black is on this example, and I'm gonna be doing the blue in place of where the silver is. So silver is gonna be more of my main color in the piece that I'm working on today. So that said, I'm gonna pick up six of my silver 11 O's. And I'm coming out of the side of this last row of three eight O's. I'm gonna go through the opposite end, just like that with my six 11 O's, and pull, and I'm gonna pull and pull and pull because there's a lot of thread. There we go, and that can just sit right on the end just like that for now. Now you wanna pick up two more of your main color, one of the other color, 11 O, one cube, one 15 in your other color, and two 15 in your main color. So you should have something like this on your needle, and you're gonna skip down to your third row of ladder stitch. So we're on row one, two, and three is over here. We're gonna go through the opposite side of row three, just like that, opposite of where we're coming out on this end of our ladder stitch and pull. And you will need to position those beads on the top of your work. And there you should have something like this. We're coming out of this set of 8-0s right here, and we're gonna be kind of making an X through our cube. We wanna pick up two more of our main color 11-0, and then I'll be going through that blue 11-0, the cube, and the blue 15 -o. So go through those three beads and pull. You can see we have our two 11 O's here and here into place and we're tacking down those cubes. So now we're gonna be doing pretty much the same thing on this side. We wanna pick up two of our 15 O's in that main color and then go through that first row of ladder stitch at the bottom just like that. So go through all three of those beads. And there's that side tacked down with two 15 O's and two 15 O's. Now we're just gonna embellish the sides of our ladder stitch a little bit so we can hide these threads better and give it a more finished look. On the side with your 11 O's, you're gonna pick up 
three 11 O's in that secondary color. And I'm gonna flip my work over so it's easier for you to see where I'm going. Coming out of this set of three, I'm gonna go down through the set of three right next to that. And pull. And it just popped these three seed beads right in between this row. And that's how it looks from the top. And now we're on the side with our 15 O's. So we wanna pick up three 15 O's in our secondary color. We're coming out of this second row of ladder stitch. We're just gonna go down through the very next row, down through row three. Pull that. That's what the bottom looks like. We'll flip it back over, and that's what we're looking like on the top. Now we wanna add another row of six of our main color 11 O's. that are gonna form another loop right here that'll sit next to our cube, just like we did over here. So coming out of this side of this set of three eight O's, we're gonna swing our needle through the opposite side of those three eight O's. And make sure all the beads are sitting on the top, even though they may have a tendency to want to slip under the bottom. And that is our first cube in place. So we're gonna be repeating this all the way down our entire length of ladder stitch. Let's do one more together. Do you remember what we did? We're gonna pick up two 11 O's in our main color, one 11 O in our secondary color, one cube, one 15 O in the secondary color, and two 15 O's in the primary color. This is what you wanna have on your needle. We're coming out of this third row of ladder stitch on this side. We want to count two more down from that one. So that was one, two, three. Go through our next little grouping of three here from the opposite side. There we go. Pull this. And sit those beads right on the top of your piece. Now we wanna finish tacking down that cube. We're gonna pick up two more 11 O's in our primary color. And then I'm gonna go through the 11 O, the cube, and the 15 O that are sitting right there in the middle. So we have that side tacked down. We just need to finish our 15 O side. So pick up two more 15 O's in your primary color. And we're gonna go down through the three eight O's in the bottom ladder stitch where it all started with this grouping of three that is. And keep pulling until those are in place. Now let's finish up our sides. So pick up three of your 11 O's in your secondary color. Flipping it over so you can see coming out of this side of that row of ladder stitch and going down the row just next to it. There we go. And then picking up three 15 O's in that secondary color and going down the very next row of ladder stitch next to where we're coming out. There we go, and you can see how this is starting to cinch up just a little bit. That's why we made the length of ladder stitch a little bit longer than we wanted our beaded portion to turn out because it's gonna shrink up a little bit. And then finally, we are going to add on our next row of six 11 O's in our main color to sit right next to our cube. We're coming out of this side, so we wanna go into the opposite side of those three 8 O's right there and make sure they go on the top. So take your time, replay that part of the video if you have to, but you are going to complete that same process all the way down the entire length. If you need to add more thread while you are in the process of doing so, go right ahead, just pick up right where you left off and continue on, and we will meet back once all of that is done and we reach the other side, and there's gonna be one more step that we do before we put the finishing touches on our piece. 
All right, guys, welcome back. So you should have something resembling this now after you've made it the long haul and you did all that beading over top of the ladder stitch. So I ended right here, I actually did one final loop of six seed beads here at the very end of the piece like we did on the other side. And I'm gonna start the very last step by actually attaching a wire guard to this side. And then by the time we get around to the other side, we'll be able to attach the other wire guard there. If you don't have wire guards, you can just make an additional loop of seed beads that you reinforce and add your jump rings to those and therefore you can use that to add your clasp. The only other thing I did was I did weave in my tail thread. I had left it where it was for the time being, just in case I had decided I needed to add any more rows of ladder stitch at the last minute, but I didn't. The 145 rows worked out perfectly for me. And from here on out, all we will need is our 15-0 seed beads. I'll be using my secondary color. Of course, you can use whatever color you want. I left off here at the very last row of ladder stitch, and I'm just gonna pick up two 15 O's and then pick up my wire guard going through one side of that, pulling that down to my work. I'm going to go through the other side of the wire guard. Setting our thread in place and then I'm going to pick up two more 15 O's. And then flipping it over so you can see, I'm gonna go through the other side of that ladder stitch that we're coming out of. So up through those three eight O's, just like that. And pull that down to your work and then go through this one more time. So I'm gonna go up through these two 15 O's and around through the wire guard and back through the other side and through the other two 15 O's just to reinforce it a little bit before we move on. All right, so for our last beading step, we wanna make our way up through the five seed beads. I'm going through the first four that I can get through right now, but we're gonna go through the first five seed beads here on the very end next to your last cube heading toward the side of your necklace with the 15-0 beads. So the 15-0 side is gonna be at the top and the bottom is the 11-0 side. That's gonna give our necklace that nice curve because the side with the smaller beads is gonna cinch up a little bit more than this side. And all we're gonna be doing is popping in a 15-0 in each of these little gaps. So I'm gonna pick one up and I'm gonna go down through that blue 15-0 that's right next to the cube and pull that and it's gonna start cinching everything together. I'm gonna pick up another 15-0 and this time I'm gonna go through that fifth 11-0. So we have again our row of six silver ones that I put on and I'm gonna not go through that sixth one. I'm gonna go through the one right before it which I'm gonna call the fifth one. And we're popping in a 15-0 right in there as well pick up another 15-0 and go down through the next 15-0 that's sitting on the side of the cube that you get to next and pick up another 15-0 and go through seed bead number five in that row of six that you get to next. And you can see as I pull, it's not only cinching everything together, but you have these little clusters of three 15-0s that are going to be sitting in between each of your stripes. So that's what you wanna look for. Pick up another 15-0, go down through the 15-0 next to your cube, and we'll do one more together. Pick up a 15-0 and go through that fifth seed bead right there. And there you have it. As you're doing that, just a little tip for you, you might wanna take your needle and just pop these little stripes up to the top so that as you're pulling and cinching everything together, your stripes are sitting up next to the cubes, maybe slightly above them instead of sinking down below the cubes. It just makes everything look a little bit nicer. And that way you train it to hold that really nice, clean shape. So continue on in this manner all the way to the other end of your necklace at which point we will put on the wire guard and then admire our finished piece.
All right, so I have added all my little 15 O's in and then I clean them up to move them out of the way and we are ready to put on our other wire guard on this end of our necklace. I'm coming out of that fifth 11 O just like we had been doing and I'm going to continue down through the sixth and then over through those three eight O's on the end. So that'll position us to put on our other wire guard. And here's the four little 15 O's we'll need. So just like we did on the other side, I'm gonna pick up two 15 O's and the wire guard, go through the other side. Add on two more 15 O's. And then I'm gonna go through the three eight O's at the end through the opposite side and that's gonna pull everything together. And there we go. Make sure your thread's sitting in the groove of the wire guard. And then I'm gonna go through this one more time to reinforce it up through the 15 O's and the wire guard again and around. And I didn't mention it again, but you definitely want to make sure before you're tying off your necklace that you haven't pulled anything way too tight to where the necklace won't sit with this nice gentle curve. And also you don't want it to be too loose. So just check your tension, make sure that all these little sections are pulled together. Use your needle to pull up any of those stripes of seed beads to make sure they will sit in place nicely. You can squeeze on it like this and it'll all come together. And then by the time you are ready to knot off your work, this design should stay in place just like that. So now that we have added the other wire guard, I am ready to make some knots. So I'm going to actually just complete this. I'm gonna go back through those three eight O's to finish off that last loop with the wire guard. And then I'm gonna make a knot, first of all, right here. And you can do this however you want. I'm sure you're used to finishing off your beaded jewelry at this point if you have made it this far in the tutorial. So like I usually say, I'll be doing about three half hitch knots hiding the knots each time by going through some beads like that and then making another one. You can do as many of those as you want to make sure your piece is secure. And if you have a lot of thread left over, if you even wanted to, you could go through your whole piece again. I've made two already, I'll make one more. And I'm gonna call that a day. Just go through these. All right, so I'm gonna clip this off. Now I'm ready to add the jump rings. Isn't this looking beautiful? I love this color combination. I love seeing all you guys' creations too, so feel free to share them with me. Here's one jump ring on, and I will quickly do the other one. And add my clasp. There we go. And like I usually do, I will probably go back and add a little extender if I am going to put this up for sale. That way, somebody who wants to wear this as a longer piece has that option. So here is the finished necklace. I wanna thank you guys so much for being with me today for this tutorial. Don't forget, I will leave a complete materials list down below with links to everything that you need. You can find a lot of these products, including the crystal cube beads at bbcraft.com. I will leave a link to those down below also, as well as a coupon code to save you a little bit off your purchase. Feel free to leave me a comment down below. Let me know how your necklace turned out or anything else you'd like to say. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And as always, happy beading. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. For more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can check out the information section below this video for links to all my social media handles, recommended products, and my shop and blog at orchidnoble.com. Thanks for watching.